ripping big brother stop fibbing we all gotta make a living for those that live in riches do you understand the vision maybe not because you're too selfish to take a listen cheer make a change get it together to make a change all right welcome everyone to read to lead life with our friend barry strut and this is his awesome song now it's time for an election and the people want to fight the fox is in the hen house and the chickens are uptight when i'm closer to an answer because the questions have no right it's all a corporate selection and the night may be the night so i say run baby run yeah run While we wait for people to join us, make sure that you write in the chat who you are, where you're coming from. Stop until you reach your goal. Make a lifelong change, build a future home. Young kids are in school, unemployment grows. Let's do it for the world, that's what youth holds. All breathe the same air, don't remain fair. That is why educated people need the welfare. Oh, yeah, that is what we need. Let's all get together, let the peace increase. Yeah. so-called good all right oh man man that's awesome thank you so so much so we'll go ahead and get started uh we always start off with music before we kick off read to lead live but today it was your song so all right yeah. very, man, that is awesome. so i just wanted to i was like let's play this out this is a very song it is so timely it's about equality it's about justice it's awesome 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 stuff awesome work so barry thank you so much for being here all right, everyone, welcome to Read to Lead Live. I'm your host, Kamara from Read to Lead. Thank you so much about being here. As I've already said, I'm so excited about our guest, Barry, who is not only a lawyer, but as you heard, he is also a jazz musician. Um, it's something that he and I definitely have in common. We both love jazz. We love the performing arts. Um, in fact, I loved it so much that I brought over 100 students from North New Jersey to listen to jazz at Carnegie Hall. And to this day, they keep calling me up, telling me how amazing that experience was. So if you haven't gotten into jazz, definitely go ahead. Uh, YouTube, Google, Spotify, Pandora, do something and really get into your jazz because it is awesome. It's nice and groovy. Love it, love it, love it. So Barry has earned the highest national rating for lawyers awarded by Martindale Hubble and is listed among the top 100 trial lawyers by the National Trial Lawyers. An active trial attorney, Barry has served as a guest lecturer at the Trial Lawyers Committee of the Westchester Bar and has also taught legal research at Westchester Community College and Empire State College. Paired with his love for legal is his love for music. 
But that's not the only exciting thing about Barry. He's a jazz musician and music lover. As a freelance musician, he was on Capitol Records as part of a funk jazz pop group known as Mystic Merlin. Barry, welcome. How are you today, sir? I'm feeling great. Thanks for having me. It's uh, wonderful to be here. Great, thanks so much. Before we get into the questions, I just wanna remind everyone that if there's anything that Barry and I are talking about that you're excited about, you can go ahead and comment about it in the chat. You can give us some, uh, drop the mics, you can give us some claps, you can give us some snaps. We believe in positive vibes only, so make sure that all your comments are positive. I know that, that they will be, but just a friendly reminder. So we just listened to your song, and before I go into the questions that we have, I wanna talk a little bit about how did that song originate? Well, that was, uh, you may remember a few years back where the uh, uh, occupation movement down in, and that song was written and filmed one day before the police came in and, and tore down the whole demonstration. So it, it was kind of, you know, the video, if you get a chance to see that, I think it's on YouTube. Uh, it's called Run the Occupy Movement Endures, just so run. So anyhow, that's that's what it was about. And uh, I got to meet some young kids, young rappers, first time I ever worked with them. And that's what we kind of came up with. So it was wonderful. I had, oh, man. It was a great experience. That. Yeah. That's, that's so cool. Um, actually, I'm going to swing back to something that we talked about a little bit earlier, because I thought this would be interesting for our audience to know. So, okay. you know, you were working with a young rapper. He came in. He didn't have anything written down. You were worried. Uh, but what did he do? Tell us. I was, I was very upset because I, I had written the whole rap out. And he said, no, no, no. And all the other guys said, no, no, man, that's not the way it works. So to me, it was like watching Charlie Parker play jazz. He just wrote down ideas. He said, what do you want? And I told him, I told him. And he goes in, then he says, listen to the music all the way through. And then he says, okay, let's go. And that's what he came up with. So, I mean, I had some words and stuff, but he really, he just put it together in a way I would have never come up with, you know, it was oh, just man. wonderful. Yeah. Fantastic. I love that story. So um, before we hopped on, you said, you know, when we were getting ready for this, you were thinking about yourself at 10 years old. So tell us, what did you want to do slash be when you were 10? You know, I, it, it was a hard uh, thing to think back to then, but probably I used to just say, oh, I'll be a doctor, you know, kind of thing. And I loved music and I had music, but I never thought that that would be me. I really thought. You know, I guess because your parents push you, you know, and you get ideas in your head, you want to be a policeman or a teacher or, you know, a doctor. And that was just kind of what I would say. But I don't think that's really what I felt. You know, it took a long time for me to figure out what I want to be. And, and that's one of the things I think at that age, you just don't get locked into anything. There'll be so many plateaus, so many changes. You won't even, you won't even remember it. <laughs> By the time something else happens. I mean, you know, there's going to be things in your path that look like they're stopping you from what you want to do. And my experience was just turn it around. You know, whatever it is. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I could, you know, oh, I can't use my, my lyrics. So let's hear what he can say. Maybe we can work together. So you can't plan it all out. Whatever, whatever you do, it's, something else is going to happen. And you're going to have to just, you know, improvise. You know? so true you got to improvise you have to roll with the punches so you're a lawyer and a jazz musician not a doctor so tell us a little right. bit about that journey how did you um become a lawyer what was that path like and then how did you always stay connected to the jazz world wow you know i mean it it, it just really kind of was luck in a way i went to i was in a pre-med program in college and i met these guys who were playing that night and it turns out i don't know if you know the brecker brothers have you ever heard of them but but it was a, a friend of theirs and then mike brecker came the next year he's one of the greatest jazz musicians ever ever to exist play the saxophone and uh he's been dead 12 years now it's very uh, uh very sad uh, thing for me but but uh he turned me on to, to listening to music and jazz again, you know, and I thought, well, I'll just, I'll go that way. And then it turned out years later, I started picking up the horn and playing. And then I came to New York 
and uh, I dropped out of college, so I needed to finish college. So I went to this school called Empire State where you can trade in some of your life experiences and God knows I had a ton of them. So I got enough credits to finish my degree and I had to do some other stuff. And then they said, what do you want to do? And I said, you know, I'd really like to be a lawyer if I could be like a people's lawyer, you know, something to do with that. And they said, well, they got a new school at City University in New York. It's just starting up. I applied to Antioch and there and a couple other schools. I got in and that was a place I chose and changed my life. You know, really did. I, wanna, I love that. And I want to talk a little bit about that, that gap that's between <laughs> you started <laughs> college, you were in the pre-med program, and then you had life experiences, and then you went to Empire State. Tell yeah, us, 17, you years, a whole bunch of details 17 years between my sophomore my friend, my, I guess between my sophomore and my junior year, it was 17 years. I wouldn't advise necessarily taking that long. But, uh, but I do think that, you know, you tend to do what you like and you get better because you like it and you do it. And the better you get, the more you do it. And so it's, it's a cycle. But sometimes you know, if you're if you're not finding what you like, you have to try different things, and don't just think because the first thing that you tried, you know, uh, and and you didn't, you don't ever fail. I think you learn. You get an obstruction, and you find your way through it. You know, and sometimes it means just changing directions. Sometimes it means trying a different approach. Sometimes it means dropping the whole idea and going a different way. I mean, people, so many people I know you know, started one way and went to another, you know, uh, a lot of people think they want, they, they go into law and not because they wanted to. And, you know, I found that in my law school, that was not true because it was a special law school, but most law schools, kids don't know what to do. They don't want to be a doctor. So they'd be a lawyer and they hate it because they never wanted it. So I love that, right? Find what you love. Don't be afraid to experiment. Don't say like man if you thought at 10 years old you were going to do xyz but you yeah. actually try it and you realize man i don't really like it it's okay to say i don't like it and try something else try yeah. something different and yeah. see where life takes you um i love that yeah, i have a that. question i think from right. an audience member who just asked because i think it's a good follow-up oh, cool. yeah. what are you i mean you know you love music but what are you passionate about passionate about yeah yeah what are you passionate about you're talking about styles of music now or no 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 just, just in life just, like yeah. what 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 drives you what, what are your passions besides music because we know music now but what else drives you what are your passions well that you know i'm thinking the reason i paused a little bit uh i'm always curious i i once had i was mentoring a boy about uh maybe middle school when i started it just something i happened to fall into. And he was doing his homework and we were researching something and I went, oh, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Man, do you know what that really was about? And I started doing it and he was like, no, 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 I don't have to do that. And I said, I know you don't have to do it, but it's so interesting. Don't you want to know about it and everything? And we went through the whole thing and it just happened. And he looks at me at the end and he goes, you're the first person I really know that really likes to think. And it, it shocked me because I never, you know, I never heard anybody say that about myself, but it never occurred to me that I thought everyone liked to think. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I guess some people don't. I mean, he looked at it like I've got to sit down and answer these questions as opposed to, wow, you know, what are these questions really about? Why are they asking it? You know, what are they not telling me about that? I was always that kind of kid, I guess. So I'm passionate about everything, you know? I got a dog, a border collie from rescue and I wanna know all about border collies. I mean, I just, it's just something that I am. So whatever I'm working on, I'm passionate about. Right now I'm, I'm writing a musical about Merlin and, and magic and uh, I made Merlin black for many reasons because he's an outsider and I thought this is the perfect outsider. So, I wrote that play and uh, I'm working on that every day for the last three years. And of course, now that Broadway is shut down, you know, I'm not quitting. So I could either rethink it 
and not make it a big thing like I thought, or I could continue this way, right? I could continue this way. And if it doesn't work out, um, it'll be back in two more years. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, that you, you just can't, you, you just, it was so much fun doing it. If it never gets legs, it's something I did because I wanted to do. And I saw it to the end, you know, I'm not going to quit. Don't ever I quit. I love that. Don't ever quit. Man, we've got so many nuggets right here. First of all, having a passion for thinking and curiosity and just being inquisitive, you know, just don't take things at face value, but ask more, right? Um, Ask that why. Be that annoying two-year-old that's always asking your parent, why, why, why? Tap into your inner two-year-old and constantly ask why, why, why. And yeah. secondly, just personally, I can't wait to get tickets to go see your show. The power behind the throne. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you've obviously taken all of these different career journeys. You've mentored people. You're, you know, creating this awesome um, play. You're thinking about music. We'd love to know, through all of that, I'm sure you've had time to think about leadership and what leadership means to you. Uh, so what does leadership mean to you? And then how can the students at home or in class show, embrace their leadership now? You know, that, that's, a, that's a tough question because I was, not, I was not one of those out front leaders. I, I learned a little bit about it in college, I think. But, but to go back, one of the things that I thought was a really bad habit of mine was I would say, I know, I know. When I was a kid, you know, I go, I know, I know. Somebody started telling me something, I, I shut off the listening, you know, because I wanted to just talk about, you can see me like this, what I had in my mind. I wasn't interested in what you were doing. I was interested in how that fed into something. And if you're saying something, I know. And I think that's the opposite of what a leader does. You know, a leader really needs to listen. And I've learned that later, you know, also trying cases with juries. You got to listen to the jury. You get a chance to talk to them. And if you talk the whole time, you're not going to learn anything about it. That was the first time in my life where I realized if I shut up completely, I'll hear something from every juror in this room. But if I talk about my case, I won't know really how they're taking it, you know, I'll get the thoughts out. But so I would say leadership is, is, is also listening to people. And if you listen to people, they like you, they find out about you, you find out about them. You can't find out about other people if you don't, if you're not a good listener, you know? And even if you know what they're gonna say, you might be surprised. They may give a twist to what they're gonna talk about that you never thought about. So I think being leadership is, is listening. It's a lot of listening, not talking. People think it's talking. I don't think it is. I think it's listening. Right now we got a different style in the, in the, in the uh, <clears throat> presidency. And one of the things you notice about you know, uh, the new president is he seems to want to listen. You know, he seems to listen to what people are saying as opposed to I have the answer, here it is, you know? So, and he's, I can think gonna be a good leader. So we'll see, but I listen. love that, right? Listening is so, such an important quality. And it's a quality that we don't often hear about, especially when we're thinking about leadership, but the ability to listen, to really empathize with what people are telling you, and then to create solution and community together. I think it's such, so well said. Thank you so much, Barry. I see a question from some students. Uh, so they want to know what career or job has been your favorite? Oh, that's a that's a that's a tough one. You know, uh, my wife was saying she was shocked when I said I love being a lawyer for 25 years or however long I did it, and while I was doing it, it was my favorite thing. I walked away from music, but music is is a jealous mistress. You know, if you if you uh, don't pay attention to her, they come back. So it was always in my head, I would come home and play a little bit. But when I found out that I could retire, I'm, I'm doing you know little jobs for people and doing some bigger jobs. But I, I still love it, but I, I have to say writing music and being able to see an idea come to life in the studio with other people 
that's the part I miss. And especially with COVID, I had to shut down, you know, the, the musical in terms of going in to the studio. That's the best part of it to me that is, is creating something from nothing, you know, from a little idea you have and, and then see it come to fruition. You know, which means doesn't mean it has to be a number one hit, although we did have some top 20s in Europe. But, but uh, it, it's not that so much as, as does it mean something to you that you wanted to, to see. So, I, you know, every job I'm doing at the time, like I said, I, I'm passionate about what I'm doing. If not, I, I'm not going to do it. I mean, there's no, yeah. no point. I love the idea, especially as a fellow creative, about coming together with community to see the creation come to life. And then you've mentioned COVID a couple of times, right? I mean, you could yeah. have quit, but you're still writing the musical. You still have dreams about how it's going to come to fruition. Um, so our students obviously have been going through the pandemic just like the rest of us. What words of encouragement do you have as they might be struggling with some social isolation um, not being able to see their friends, not having the same kind of community aspect that we think of when we think about school. Yeah, I could, I, I think that's, it's a tough, it's a tough thing, you know, I mean, the, the, I've always been, you know, I've been a bit of a loner too. So, I mean, the creative process, so for me, it, it wasn't so hard going in, you know, to, to go to the next step for the song and music, but, and I have the Zoom thing, I have my arranger on, so I learned how to use Zoom and do this. And, you know, we, like last night, we were put the music up that I was writing and he has a screen and he can share. And we're, I've, I've got his piano, he's got a piano and we're talking and he's writing the music and it's changing in front of my eyes. Very different. I wouldn't have ever had that experience. You know, normally we would just, you know, maybe send something, you know, finished, but this is an interactive, uh, interactive thing. So while I miss being in the studio with him and, and uh, hopefully that's going to end soon, uh, it, it, again, it's an obstacle, but I made something out of it to learn how to use technology because I wasn't born into it like you kids or you've had it since you know, you were little. To me, the television was the new thing. So that's how old I am. So anyhow, uh, so yeah, I, I don't that. have any special, you know, special answers. It's just you got to struggle through it, and and uh, if you can see how it maybe is helping you in some way, you know, maybe you get feedback from somebody. So you know about a part of you in the Zoom process and gives you something to work on. So. Yeah, no, I think that's right. I mean, the idea of just being able to struggle and persevere through, and then when you get through it, you can see all the strength, um, yeah. the strength of character that you realize that you have within yourself. And then of course, there are, are moments where we are thinking outside the box, we are learning things, we're doing things in different ways, in ways that we might not have thought were imaginable, right? So yeah. you guys at home, you could be thinking, man, I never thought that I could have these types of conversations on Zoom. I'm understanding what the workplace is like because I'm doing the exact same thing that my parents might be doing, hopping onto technology and having meetings and conversation. So you're already getting some real world work experience, even just yeah. going through school through through the Zoom community. Well, that's, right? so, yeah, that that's the thing. I think, you know, jobs you're gonna get from here on out, businesses are learning from this. They're taking from this shutdown that we all had to do this they're taking things that are gonna stay with you. So you're gonna be experienced in that. So there may not be, I mean, you know, there'll be an office for a lot of people to go to obviously, but there's gonna be more of this at home work probably in the future, even when we don't have to. Now they do because it can save money, it can save time. Uh, you learn how to have somebody from all over the world. I know people have written songs together from six or eight different countries at the same time. You know, I mean, that's, incredible and and people wouldn't necessarily have done that if they didn't have to you know so true so true so i've got a couple of fun questions from okay. our students uh one well, is <laughs> one is what is your favorite animal oh my favorite animal i would i would say a border collie dog or an elephant 
and I, I know that seems a little, but uh, the things I've learned about elephants over the year, and it may have to add octopus to that. I saw this documentary called uh, My Oct Octopus Teacher. It's this guy that had this incredible relationship with, with, a, with an octopus. It, it's, it sounds crazy. I know it's a documentary, but if you ever get a chance, you might like it. But um, yeah, it's, it's just the intelligence that they have, uh, both dogs and, and elephants. And uh, there's something so warm about both of them to me, you know? I mean, you know, you always, I always imagined, you know, hugging an elephant. I can see why people are attracted to them. They're just, they're great animals. <laughs> And then another question is, what other types of music do you do? Well, you know, that's interesting because in the play that I'm writing, I decided I have some R&B stuff. I have a little classical, a couple of classical pieces I wrote. I started in classical music clarinet. I wasn't that good at it, but I, I had, a, you know, that's where you start. You got to start somewhere. So I always had that. Um, I don't really, you know, Duke Ellington once said, there's two kinds of music, good and bad. And, and I really think that's, that's true. You know, I try to keep open. I don't like all rap, but I've learned to like some rap. But uh, there's really no style that, that uh, doesn't interest me, you know, whether it can, it can be African, it can be Middle Eastern. I try to put some of all that in, that, in the play in the songs I'm, I'm writing now. So it's, it's an adventure for me. It's different, very different. And Broadway, which I, you know, when I was a little kid, it's a funny thing you talk about. I never thought the one type of music I said, I don't like musicals. I really had this thing when I was a kid and I was in a band. I didn't like music, I thought. But then, you know, as the more I saw and I got older, I thought, well, okay, there's something to it, but I don't know. And I end up writing a musical. I mean, if you would have told me that when I was a teenager, I would have said never, never. I, God, I like it. pop, I like folk, I like jazz, but not Broadway. But Broadway is what you bring to it. So, you know, I'm, I'm bringing something, you know, hopefully we'll get a little more, because they're doing more now on Broadway. They're doing more pop music, all that pop stuff. So anything goes, you know, don't be stopped if you have an idea of, for music and you want to blend two types just do it it's all yeah, it's, it's gonna be good or bad it's gonna work or it's not gonna work i mean i think even outside of music if you have an idea just pursue it just create it just dream it just just do it right and let's see what happens and see what just the process of learning something even if it doesn't go well even if it's just for you to see or your family and your friends to enjoy just do it you know just to have that positivity i think there is something about and that's how you can lead Intrinsically, you don't always have to be a leader leading other people. You can lead yourself by um, having this passion, having a desire, and then just putting it together on paper. Barry, did you have something to say? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Who, I don't know if this was an employer or my partner. So, somewhere along the lines, I picked up. It's such a great thing. You know, if you don't take anything else away, this is it. You know, we all have our little things we want to do, and then we're afraid to show them. You know, we're afraid to... Uh, whatever it is, maybe you have a little project you think you want to write, but you don't want to show it. And then you get to the point where, you know, are you going to send a poem and you're going to send a song. And, and someone once, once said to me, they can only say no once. And I thought, in other words, what are you afraid of? I mean, they say no, they can say no, no, no. <laughs> if they say yes, you're happy. You got a ton. They say no, that's it. You move on to, you know, you show it to someone else. They can only say no once, right? You go for a job. They say no. But what's your fear? That they're going to say no? Okay. So they'll say no once. That's it. You don't have to, you don't have to stay around and hear it. <laughs> and it sounds silly, but it really, it helped me a lot. It helped me a lot. I think when I tried my first case, I was so nervous and I kept thinking that, you know, kid, you, you know, it's going to be done. You only have to do it once and, you know, you'll move on. The trial will move and you'll move with it. <laughs> and that's what happened. 
I mean, I think that's absolutely true, right? The worst thing that anyone can say to you is no. And then you mm-hmm. just move on, move right. on to the next thing, move on to the next person. Um, and so you get your yes. So th- that's so powerful, Barry. I also love the cyclical nature of you saying as a kid, like, I could not imagine liking Broadway, being uh-huh. on Broadway. And now you are creating a musical. It's so funny how oh, it sometimes it. comes back at you full circle. Um, so that is amazing. There are some additional questions, but we are getting to 1.30. So I'm going to get one more question from the audience, and then we'll wrap up with our last question that we ask everyone. Um, you know, I'm going to do this one from uh, Leslie Brown's elementary class. The kids want to know, how is your day going? It's really going well. It's so warm here for the first time. I walk the dog once already and I'm probably going to walk her again then I'm going to sit outside in the sun and probably read and uh, my wife and I all join the afternoon it's been so rare we've had such cold weather and it's been beautiful the last two days so my day is going great and getting to talk to you and be here with you is making it even better great thank you so much Barry so the question that we ask everyone is what would you tell your 10 year old self Listen, don't talk so much. That's what I would say to me. I, I was a big talker, you know, when I shouldn't have been. So listen up. That's all. I love that. And we'll end there. So we love the fact that we're going to listen, listen as an intrinsic and important part of leadership. Uh, don't be afraid to follow your own passions. It's okay if the journey takes you many different places and you have many different jobs. It's all about the experience that you bring to the table. Everyone who's been with us, thank you so much. I'm sorry that I couldn't get to all of the questions. We had so much engagement, but we really appreciate you all for being here. Barry, thank you again. And thank make you. sure that you guys sign up for the next weekly live on in April. All right, everyone, take care. Bye.